Chapter 18 Several kids were already out in the dark corridor by the time Corey got there. A single amber bulb at the far end of the hall provided the only source of light. The kids were shadows, moving and shifting in the dark as they searched for the girl who had screamed. There's no one here, someone yelled, his voice echoing off the tile walls. Then who screamed? Someone else asked. Corey knew who had screamed, but where was she? I'm down here. Can anybody help me? Lisa's voice flowed up from the stairwell. Taking them two at a time, Corey was the first one down the stairs. What's going on? Who is it? Is someone down there? Voices bounced around the empty hallways. Lisa, are you okay? Corey asked. She was sitting on the floor at the bottom of the stairs. No, I don't think so. He helped her to her feet, but she couldn't stand on the right foot, so we eased her back to the floor. Several kids were on the stairway now, looking down at them in the dim light. What happened? It's Lisa Bloom. Is she okay? Did she fall? I... I'm okay. Lisa called up to them. Sorry if I scared you. You can go back into the gym now. Really, I'll be okay. A few kids lingered on the steps. Some kids started whistling loudly, seeing how it sounded in the echoing hallways. Eventually, the music started in the gym again, and everyone went back inside. It's my ankle. Lisa told Corey, wincing in pain as she tried to stand on again. It got twisted, but I think it's okay. I just have to walk it off, if I can walk. Wow, I was lucky. I could have been killed. These stairs are hard. He let her lean her weight against him as she tested the ankle. Did you fall? He asked. No, I was pushed. What? You hurt me. But who? Ouch! She cried and leaned harder on his arm. How should I know? It was so dark. I was walking past the stairway. I didn't see anyone. I thought I was alone. It was so quiet out here. It was creepy. Just the sound of the drums vibrating from the gym. I... I think I better sit down. He half carried her back onto the bottom step, where she dropped down heavily, breathing hard from the pain. Hey, is this some memorial... Is this some memorable first date, huh? She asks. They both laughed, more from tension than from from, from, from from Mark. So go on, Corey said. What happened? I don't know. I guess someone was there the whole time. I didn't hear footsteps or anything. Of course, I wasn't paying much attention. I was just concentrating on how mad I was at you. Thanks a bunch, Corey said sarcastically. I knew this was. I knew this had to be my fault. Well, of course it is, she said, pulling him down beside her and holding onto his arm. Suddenly, two hands shoved me hard from behind. I saw this guy standing there as I fell down the stairs. I guess I screamed. Guy? What guy? He was weird looking. I couldn't see too well in the dark. He had watery eyes and sort of a puffy face. And he had a shiny earring in one ear. An earring? Corey's heart dropped to his knees. Brad, he called. Brad? Who's Brad? You know him? He's Anna's brother, Corey said. He's very wild. But he tried to kill me, Lisa cried, starting to realize just what a close call she'd had. Why would Anna's brother try to kill me? I just thought of something, Corey said, jumping to his feet. Did the door open after you fell down the stairs? What do you mean? He just seemed confused. Did the outside door open? Did the guy with the earring run out? No, I, I don't think so. No, I'm sure. The door never opened. Well, would it keep the, all the other doors locked at night? Corey said excitedly. Only the door near the gym is open for a dance. That means the person who pushed me is still in the building? That's right. Let's take a little look around. He lifted her up the step. Can you walk? She put her foot down on the floor and tested it. Yes, it's a little better. He helped her up the stairs. We'll search the long corridor first, then we'll double back and search the shorter one. He was whispering now. She leaned lightly against his hand against him, staying close as they walked. Their shoes clicked against the hard floor. The only sound in the long, dark corridor. This is silly, she whispered. Maybe, maybe not, Corey whispered back, his eyes straight ahead of him. Shh. He stopped and held her back. He'd heard a noise in the language lab. Was someone hiding in there? They crept up to the glass panel door, which was pulled up about a third of the way, and listen. They heard it again. 
a shuffling sound like the footsteps of someone scampering to a new hiding place. They stood listening at the door for a few seconds. Someone's in there, Corey whispered. I think we're about to find the guy who pushed you. He pulled the door open the rest of the way. The two of them stepped quickly into the large room. Lisa felt along the wall until she found the light switch and turned on the lights. Who's in here? Corey called. The sound again. They followed it across the room. One of the windows had been left open a few inches. The sound they'd been hearing was Venetian blind blowing in the wind. Go work, Sherlock, Lisa cracked, shaking her head. You've caught the Venetian blind in the act. Corey didn't laugh. Come on, let's keep searching, he said, turning off the lights. If Brad is still in the building, I want to find him. They turned a corner near Mr. Cardoso's classroom and walked on silently. Lisa leaning a little harder on Corey as her anchor began to swell and grow more painful. The hall grew darker as they walked away from the light. Scratchy sounds. They both gasped. Something scampered in front of them, stuck into one of the classrooms. What was that? Lisa asked. Stop pulling on my sweater so hard. You're taking all the wool off, Corey complained. But what was that? Lisa whispered oddly, gripping his arm even tighter. A four-legged creature, he said. Probably a rat. Oh, she said. Think there are more of them? Probably. They walked to the end of the corridor, sticking close together, then headed back, opening doors and peering into the dark, silent rooms. Nothing seemed the same. In the dark, the familiar classrooms looked so much larger, it became mysterious caverns filled with creaking sounds and shifting shadows. Curry, I think you'd better take me home, Lisa whispered, sounding very discouraged. Look at my ankle. It's about the size of a cantaloupe. I don't think I could walk much further. Sure you don't want me to dance some more? It was Corey's feeble idea of a joke. They both knew it was feeble, but they laughed anyway. But the laughter was cut short when they heard a voice come from Mr. Burnett's biology classroom. A young man's voice. Very quiet, but definitely a young man's voice. Lisa leaned against the cool tile wall for support. They crept silently to a doorway, which opened just a crack. Another sound. A cough. Someone was hiding in there. Brad? Lisa whispered, putting her mouth right up to Corey's ear. We'll soon see, Corey whispered back, his heart pounding. He pulled open the door and stepped inside. He flicked on the light. A girl screamed. She was sitting on a boy's lap. Her lipstick was smeared across her chin. Corey recognized the boy. Gary Harwood, a senior. A guy from the wrestling team. Hey, Brooks, what do you think you're doing? Gary barked, squinting at the sudden light. Give us a break, the girl said, frowning, her arms still around Gary's massive shoulder. Can't we have some privacy? Yeah, get lost, Gary said menacingly. Sorry, Corey managed to say. He carefully turned off the lights and backed out of the room. Lisa was already in the hall, leaning against the wall, laughing and shaking her head. Cora reached out and pulled her hair. Not funny, he insisted. She pulled him across the hall into the small music room. She was laughing so hard, tears rolled down her cheeks. Don't get hysterical on me, he said, forcing a straight face. But it is hysterical, she said, wiping a juice of an open hands. A guy from the wrestling team. That's who you pick on? He'll murder you. He cracks walnuts against his neck. She started laughing all over again. It's not funny. Corey insisted. Come on, we've got to keep searching. If the guy who pushed you was still... He stopped in mid-sentence. Someone had stepped into the shadows of the doorway. First, Corey saw the sleeve of the black fur parka as a dark figure grabbed the doorknob. Then he, stood the, then he saw the hood pulled up to shield the man's face. Lisa grabbed Corey's arm. That, that's him, she whispered. The hood slid back as the man entered the room. It was Brad.